Uh, so a little update on my training situation, guys. So tomorrow is going to be my first day, Thursday, which would be the first September 1st of sparring for me. So first day of sparring for this training camp for TJ Dillashaw, UFC 280 in Abu Dhabi. <sighs> I'm very excited about this. We got a couple of good bodies that we're going to work with. We're just going to start with three rounds. Um, then this weekend, I'm heading out to Dallas. Going to go hang out with some family over there. Go see the lady, um, her parents, her uh, brother, the kids, the wife. Um, we're going to be able to hang out over there. And uh, very excited about that. I'm actually getting, I'm probably getting fitted for a grill. Been trying to get a new replacement for the longest. So, D-Town Jewelry, Custom Jewelry, shout out to you guys, thank you guys, I'm definitely gonna pop in over there probably Saturday at some point, so I'm looking forward to getting that, but yeah, going to Dallas, so I'm not gonna spar Saturday, I normally spar Thursdays and Saturdays, and at this point in my career, I'm trying to figure out how to make things work here in Vegas, because back home, I kind of have a lot more of a stranglehold because the gym is that much smaller in size in terms of athletes, it's more of a public gym, but we do have fighters in there at Law MMA and, of course, Sarah BJJ in Huntington. So I could get the world in terms of grappling. And then I got Nick Gullo, who's over at uh, Roy Royale in, uh, I think, New High Park Jiu-Jitsu. And he's got more of like a, a wrestler-based grappling group of guys that I can get to work with, guys that are going to be looking to take me down and maintain top position as opposed to kind of being content with being swept i think sometimes at um some of the other bjj gyms sometimes just stylistically you get guys who play more bjj but from us fighters who need guys that's going to be like no i'm pressure passing i'm staying on top i'm being stingy with points being stingy with get-ups i need that you know so sometimes uh, i get some of that with like a nick ronin jason Rao. i get those guys great but then when i need like that from like the smaller guys sometimes i, I won't get that as much so I could go with Nick and some of his guys, and they have more of that wrestler base. Even though the jiu-jitsu might not be as tight as some of the guys over at Sarah's, but it's a different look and it's a different feel. So you get comfortable with different situations, and that's what it's all about. So for me, being here in Vegas, I'm trying to make the schedule as close and as similar as possible to how I do it back home in New York. So in New York, normally on a Monday morning, I'm going to give you guys my schedule. Give you guys free game right here. So get out your pens and notebooks. And guys, if you like what you're hearing, man, hit the goddamn... Su Let me reframe my language. Please smash the like button. Ding! <laughs> and drop a comment if you have any questions. I'm going to get back into the comment section. I didn't get to get to too many of them the last, like, week or two weeks. But I'm definitely going to get to them this week because it's a little bit of a lighter load for me. Um, just really crushing and focusing more on the training camp. Okay, so here we go. Monday, wake up early, I got either, now before when I was doing this all by myself, I would get up at around 8, do the podcast, and uh, I would do all the editing and have it uploading, then I'd go to the gym, work out around 9 or 9.30, bang it out, uh, my circuits that I do, which consists of anywhere from about 20 to 40 minutes of work, shower up, come back home, then get something to eat, upload the rest of the video, now Jake Fine is helping me with that, and then I'll have a break well, we have the MMA grappling class starting at 5.45 to 6.45, an hour-long class that I would normally teach, and it would be all MMA-based positions. We drill actual technique, wrestling style um, for MMA, and we'll make sure the focus is super heavy on defense or offense and chaining things up, and then we go live for about half an hour sometimes, straight. Um, we do shark tanks where I would be one of the guys that's in the middle, and then we have people just rotating on, in on me every single minute. And I'm not going to get too, too in-depth with all the, the details because I don't want to give away all the goods. Um, but then Tuesday, we'll hit pads, uh, usually 12 o'clock because Ray is a night owl. So he'll be up late at night, and then he'll come in, start the day, usually like 11, sometimes 10. But usually like 11, he'll get to the gym. Uh, for me, I would rather hit pads at like nine or nine thirty, so I have more of a break till jujitsu. So normally with Ray, I'll hit anywhere from eleven thirty to one o'clock, and that would be about a half hour um, session. After that, then I have jujitsu at six p.m. Actually, now six thirty, so that's the window that I have. Then Wednesday's more of a lighter day. I used to go ham on this day too, but then I spar Thursday, and I'm like, yo, I feel like I've been hit. And ran over by a truck three times. Like they reverse, drove back over me, reverse again, and then did it one more time, and then said one more for good measure. That's how it would feel. 
on come Thursday morning after doing all that crazy work from Monday, Tuesday, and then a hard Wednesday. Because Wednesday, we have the MMA class. I would teach the same thing. Usually, now, the way I would teach it is a little bit less live work. And if we do live, it's shorter goes. So even though we're still doing like minute goes, there's only about five to eight minutes worth of live work. And it's like just a couple of rounds. You start on top, then your partner gets the chance to go on offense. And then whatever position that we're working on, we'll do that. Maybe switch four times so you get eight minutes worth of work. Um, maybe you switch partners or you stay with the same guy. And then it's a lot of technique, a lot of drilling. So it's less wear and tear on the body. And I won't even go live in that. I would just drill. Or I'll get somebody in the morning, I'll drill, and I'll come in, I'll just teach that Wednesday. So that's more of my active rest day or sometimes just a complete rest day. And then Thursday, I either do something really light like a flow spar in the morning, just kind of like a shakeout to simulate a fight because that's what I normally do on fight day. And then after that, that's usually like 9 or 10, maybe 11. And then I have that break until... Um, and I don't really like 11 because I feel like by then it's just a little too close because then I got to eat. And then if, by the time I take a nap and if I do take a nap, it's just so close. And then to run back, especially New York traffic, bro. If you leave anytime after 2.30, good luck trying to get all the way to Massapequa because that 17, maybe 20 minute drive is probably going to take you half an hour. And then to go back is going to be another half an hour. So you almost have to pick your poison. Like, do I want to rest and just sit in traffic and be miserable? Or do I want to just bring all my stuff and maybe just take a nap in the car? Sometimes I'll do that because the time wasted in the car is just way too valuable for me to do that. So I'd rather figure out ways to make it more constructive and uh, useful of the time. That's the best way to do it, in my personal opinion. But then we'll spar at 6 p.m., and that's more of an open mat sparring. Sometimes I'll get in there a little bit earlier, and then I will do the sparring in the, in the cage, so I have the cage for all rounds. Um, and then I would teach the class if I'm not sparring into the class starting, or somebody would teach the technique, and then the whole class is sparring, and then after the sparring, maybe I'll jump out and do a couple more rounds with just everybody. But it's open mat, so it's not as intense, because I feel like when you spar in a cage... And you have to watch your footwork and your placement and guys are cornering you. It's way more realistic. It's way more of a, a on edge kind of feeling. And that's what you need to do because it gives you the nerves that you get in a fight. Not that bullshit was running around all the mats. You bump into a group and you say, no, wait, wait. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry. It's my bad, my bad. Then you're stopping to pull up your shin guards. You're pulling up your knee pads. You're, you're, you're uh, making sure the other person's all right. That, that shit is is. is Complete nonsense to me. Like, that's cool if you get a good partner you could stay in a pocket and work with and be technical. But sometimes with those classes, I feel like this is all gyms that I'm speaking on. And if you agree with me, let me know in the comments. But I feel like in all gyms, you have that open mat sparring and guys come in that don't necessarily fight and they treat it like it's their pro debut and they have to make a statement and it gets crazy you know that guy who shoots a double leg or that girl who shoots a double leg and she's running the partner all the way across the room through like three or four different groups and they have to get out of the way so that their achilles doesn't get snapped or something like that for your ego to get a takedown in a open mat setting it just gets really crazy so i try not to do too much of that and if I do, I stay relatively on the edge so that this way there's more control of the space. And if I start pressing forward and you start going all the way to Guam, I just stop and just walk straight backwards and just, just kind of do one of, one of these. I'm like, we can work. I'm not trying to kill you. It ask anybody who have ever sparred with me. I don't, I'm not malicious. I'm not trying to knock you out. I just try to get real consistent, good work. And I take some and I give some. It's not like I'm trying to piece you up the entire time. It's nothing like that. I try to be good defensively. So if you're going to get something, you got to earn it, right? So that, I keep myself honest. I'm not letting you take something, give something, and I'm just letting you punch me in the face. No, no, you're going to have to, like, earn a clean, clear-cut shot. You know, technical, smart, and very controlled sparring. So that's my Thursday. Then Friday morning, we have jujitsu at Sarah BJJ. That's now at 10 o'clock. It used to be 9 o'clock. I don't know what happened. It then ended up becoming 11 o'clock. We moved it back after people were complaining to 9.30. And then it got somehow pushed back to 10 o'clock. Jason Rao does a phenomenal job teaching that class. I know him and Nick Ronan just opened up their gym. Vanguard out in, I think, Smithtown. Shout out to those guys. I got to come out there and show some love. Can't wait to come see you guys and train with you guys. I know it's a hike for me in Massapequa. But I'm going to come make it because those are two of the best guys that you could possibly ever get in terms of 
like I said, those guys who are going to attack you and really try to like p push the pace on you kind of thing. And Nick is bigger than me. Jason's bigger than me. But they give me good work. And Nick moves like a lightweight. He's super long and lanky. He's got these long arms. He's about 5'10 or 5'11. But he feels like he's like 6'2 sometimes. And his control, his grips are so tight. So we always have some good battles. Um, but he normally wins. Uh, but it's always good to have that, that humbling and that pressure to make you work. Because when I go with him, I do feel like I got to go so hard to level up where I'm at skill-wise to match him. So I got to be a little bit more physical with him as much as I can, even though I can only do that for so long because his technique is just so good that eventually wears me down. So if I do get a takedown or anything, I manage to control it for a little bit, but then somehow he's putting me in a submission or taking my back and it gets a little crazy. Um, Friday night, I usually do like a biking circuit or something like that, relatively easy, or just ride the bike. Nothing crazy, like a real moderate pace. And then Saturday we spar. Um, or if someone needs me Friday Friday evening for the puke drill, I jump in for that. And then Saturday we spar anywhere. I would spar anywhere from eleven thirty to two o'clock. I try to do go. I try to go before the two o'clock. Two o'clock is like too late for me. Like I said, I don't like driving late in the afternoon, especially in Long Island. It gets it just my tolerance because I used to drive forty five minutes to an hour sometimes to the gym when I was upstate New York, commuting from SUNY Cortland to Ithaca to go to the gym at Bomb Squad. And I would do that twice a day sometimes. And that drive made me realize how much I value my time versus like, I, I, I like the convenience of living here. This is a nice place. I would just take the L and drive to the gym. If I don't have to do that, bro, I'm not going to do that. Like straight up, just like that. You ain't about to tell me, oh, it's not that bad. Like, I don't care what you're saying, bro. I'm not doing that. That traumatized me for life. And then coming back home to Long Island when I left college and then living in Uniondale and the gym was right there. It was literally a five to seven minute drive to the gym. I got spoiled. And I, and I was like, this is, this feels amazing. I'm saving on gas money. I ain't got to drive too far. I can relax a little bit longer. I can run home to grab something if I need, or if I forgot my gear, I could go back home real quick and, and pop right back out to the gym. You know what I mean? So I much rather that convenience, that luxury, when you do that, trust me, dude, your life just so much easier. And of course, there's something to be said about the guys who commute and put that time in. But I ain't got time for that shit, man. I got a lot of shit going on, bro. I got a lot of shit I'm trying to accomplish here. And spending my time in the car, that's not conducive to the things I'm trying to get done. Especially when it comes to recovery and things like that. So, Saturday, I'll spar anywhere from 11.30 to, like I said, 2. But usually, I would say, like, around 1 is, like, the latest that I usually try to start. And then I'm done usually by 2. And then hopefully I can shower and get out of there by then. And that's my, my day. You know, sometimes I have that, that uh, halfway through training camp where I take like a whole week to kind of reset. Not a whole week, maybe like four days to let the body heal up and we almost do, almost do absolutely nothing. You still do some active stuff. But I think that type of regimen for me has worked. I mean, I don't think I got this belt by accident. And I think there's something to say about the method to the madness. I think it's just about smart work. Hard work but smart and calculated hard work, getting the right bodies, getting the right looks, doing the right things, which is your homework before the fight, prepping yourself mentally, prepping yourself physically, and making sure you have everything that you need. It's kind of like a game plan, a game, um, you got a plan A, plan B, a plan C. You can't just go in there with a plan A, because sometimes plan A don't work when you get punched right in the mouth, and you got to figure out, all right, what am I going to do? My eyes shut, my lip is busted, my nose is broke. What you going to do? What you going to do? You got to account for that type of stuff. And if you don't, if you don't have those hard days in the gym, those hard times, it's going to happen to you in the cage and you don't want to have that happen because it does not feel good. The last time I had a hard time like that was against Piotr Jan and I botched my weight cut and I've said this multiple times. I had a great weight cut. The rehydration process, I completely botched that and messed that up and I take full responsibility to that because I didn't account for the time discrepancy because it was my first time fighting in a co-main event, which means I fought way later in the night compared to the times that I normally fight, which is like at like four or five o'clock versus 830. You know, so there was a big difference in that in that gap window. So I messed that up. That's on me. I completely own that and it is what it is. Live and you learn, then get loves. That was a commercial. If you guys don't know that commercial, you're probably too young. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't mean to show my, I, my age. But yeah, that's the way I like to do things. So here in Vegas, I'm trying to 
fit all the pieces together. And so far, so good. JP Bays has been a godsend for me, huge in terms of helping me with my training camp, um, being my TJ Dillashaw. And he, people use him a lot for sparring. And uh, Coach asked me, like, uh, we could get JP. I'm like, dude, I, I would like to give JP a little bit of a break. Um, he doesn't need to spar the Tuesday, the Thursday, and then come sparring. I'm like, that's a little too much. Like, let's give him a little bit of a break. I'll work with somebody else, and maybe I could work with him Saturday. Obviously not this Saturday. I'm going to Dallas. So that's the way I'm kind of looking at it. Him just drilling with me and giving me those those realistic looks. And he's doing some good stuff where he's actually catching me. And I'm like, thank God you can actually emulate some of this stuff because these things that I thought I had a good grasp on is now letting me know, like, okay, there's some things we got to tighten up. So even if we don't get dropped, we don't give up too many of those shots because, you know, they add up and it looks a certain way to the crowd. And depending on how you react to getting hit by the ones you don't see, sometimes you do the stanky leg. I don't want to do that. So I'm trying to make sure I do the correct homework, make sure I know where to block, where to circle off at, where TJ is going to be looking to close the door with that um, return, that shake, shift, and the stuff that he throws down the middle and then ending with the head kick or the body kick, him attacking the legs. There's a whole bunch of things that I know that he does. And I'm trying to make sure when we drill, these guys are throwing those same attacks so that I see it over and over and over. And this way, I know what I'm getting into. So when I get in the octagon, he starts throwing this stuff. He's going to be like, ah. We felt this before. Ah, we felt this speed before. Ah, we felt this power before. We know exactly what we need to do. That's where I'm trying to get the mindset at. So these next seven and a half weeks, I got to make sure I'm super dialed in and I'm super pumped, man. So again, thank you for JP, um, Danny Ige today. We had a nice wrestling drill session today. We drilled for just a straight hour, straight up wrestling technique in our stance for an hour. Defense, offense, switching partners and Matt, he came down as well. Uh, next week, the class might be a little bit bigger. And it's a class, but not really, because I'm not really teaching. Most of these guys know how to wrestle, so I don't have to teach. It's just more so like we're coming in and getting good foundational work. And there was shots I was hitting. I was like, man, I forgot what it felt like to drill like this and hit some of these moves and these reactions because I don't have guys that are that crisp and clean with grappling and wrestling, I should say, that can help me tighten up those areas to keep it as sharp as it was when I was still wrestling in college. Like, I still think my wrestling is one of the best, but it falls off a little bit if you don't use it, man. You'd be surprised. You got to make sure you're keeping that shit, that tool sharp, and I'm going to need to use that against TJ. TJ wants to say whatever he wants to say. I'm going to show him a dangerous fighter when I dump him his ass on his fucking head. Like, that's going to be a dangerous fighter. Let's see how you how you do when someone picks you up with one arm and literally Matt returns you and slams you down on your shoulder, slams you down on your head, and see what it feels like on that canvas. So... TJ, I hope you're ready because I'm coming. I'm making sure I'm putting in all the work, no stones unturned, because your boy is about to be out here and still, baby. Um, and with that note, I thank you guys for always tuning in. Much love. Stay blessed. Drop your comments. And if you like my shit, subscribe to my shit or spin it back fist, baby. Bow, 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 bow. Let's go.